I'm going to show you another trick technique often used in landscapes or in anything. You can use it in the background as well. It's the dry cleaning bag or very, very ultra thin, uh, a plastic wrap, food wrap, uh, and also a separate one, which is a wax paper. Similar, but different. So I often start with, uh, so here's some examples. I often start with uh, a lighter color underneath and then when it's dry, apply a darker color, variegated color on top and then put on the plastic wrap. And you can see where the plastic wrap was, it pulls the color away because you put it on when it's wet. So this is a nice phthalo underneath and uh, ultramarine on top. So I've got many examples here. Sarah put it in at different colors and you can see where it's lighter, it pulls it up. I always like a reveal. Feels to me like you get two bangs for your buck. This is probably almost all paints gray. Darker and lighter. Love the effect. I've used it many, many times. And this is the wax paper. It's very uncontrollable. I can show you how you can control your plastic wrap, but I cannot show you how to totally control the wax paper. So here they are side by side. This is the plastic wrap and this is the wax paper. All right, so now I'm going to show you the plastic wrap. As with anything, you want to have your plastic wrap together. And I'm going to weight it on the sides because I'm going to move it aside. And I don't want that plastic wrap to move once it gets on there. So I'm just putting it across. You can see well, this is sort of a C version of something, right? You want to put it on relatively, oops, relatively wet so it can be picked up. You can add more than one color. Right. Then because I like the linear lines of uh, water, I'm just gathering the plastic wrap in my hands. Put it down, Oops. sticking. I want to keep the linear lines. So down there where it's not as linear, while it's still workable, I can go up and pull it aside. You can do this more than once as well. Here we go. So then what I would do is just weight it on the sides. Got a variety of things to weight it down. I pick it up and move it away so I can show you another one. A little quick. So this one, you can get more than one color on it. So I'm mixing up a lovely greenish. I could put it on really spotty. And then what I can do is come in with another color, this darker color I used on the earlier one, and put that in. That's a little more variety and, of course, more depth to it. And this one might work a little better because <laughs> I've got a bigger board. Smaller paper to bigger board. All right, I've already done the quote sky area. All right, so again, I'm going to take my wrap, kind of like I'm just gathering it in my fingers to lay down. And this is wet enough, I think it'll stay by itself. All right, this is one I did off screen. Um, just, you know, waiting for paint to dry. 
not that exciting. This is the one I'm going to show you with the wax paper. And I find it unreliable for the ways I've used it. I put greens underneath, blues on top. Remember, I love that reveal of something else. Spread it around. And I just took regular old wax paper. Cut right wax paper. I guess there's other brands, but this is what I have. And I put it down. I'm not going to do anything but lay it flat. And what happens with the wax paper is that it shrinks at a different rate because it's paper and it's not totally covered with wax, but partially. So I am going to put this one aside for the dry so we can see that reveal. The other one I was going to show you is, I have a little tiny piece here, and in my studio I was working and I saw bubble wrap. What the heck? I know people use bubble wrap for this. So, what am I going to do? I am going to cut a piece because I can't pick this up and move it. It is just too big. So, Here's about where it's going to be. Hopefully you can see this bubble wrap. I covered it with a this paper with a very light blue. And what kind of color combination would I like? I've decided I'm going to do kind of this burnt sienna. Maybe a little darker in value than what I first put on. Oh, that's a good value. Need some more water. Getting a nice coat. One thing about this, you don't have to practice your, you know, flat washes, which can be difficult for some of you on your papers. You can see uh, it's risen up. So what I would do is put the bubble wrap and then on either side, I would put a little weight, like I could use my pan there, and then my box of wax paper. And that's kind of holding it down a little bit. If I had some more objects that were a little heavy, what I want to do is keep that contact of the bubble wrap with the paper. All right, so... That's that portion for now. We'll see them when they're dry. All right, here's the big reveal. I let them dry. I just let them dry overnight because it's just so much easier that way. How long it takes to dry has to do with whatever temperature is going out there, whatever wind is. So this is one I had done with greens. So we've got some beautiful variegation of the greens, the blues, the Prussian blues, the Payne's gray. So we have a lot of depth here because the amount of colors and values used. I even have a very light sky. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but you know, this could be a done piece. I might go in and fill in that white spot. We'll see. And here's another one. Big reveal. Da -da -da -da. It wasn't stuck. So you can see that the plastic basically helps to pick up some of that really wet um, paint that you put on there. All right. So we did those three. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you next. And here we have the wax paper. You can see how the wax paper is very different. Remember, I put it on very flat. And it curls all by itself. It sort of cockles. So its resist pattern is different and cannot always be predicted. But not bad. All right. So at the bottom down here, I have the bubble wrap. The last of the reveals. You can see I weighted it down because bubble wrap is quite puffy. So there we have, you know, interesting pattern. Who knows what you'd use it for? Looks like a bunch of bugs, maybe honeycomb. But I've got my blue underneath, and then I have that burnt sienna on top.
So, you know, here's just another trick that you can add to your toolbox of ways to go. And I'm sure with different color combinations, you can be evocative of many, many things. Thank you.